Hello everybody. In this example, I'll be running through how to do a destination NAT or port forward and also a firewall rule, which allows a specific port through uh, from the outside to the inside. And in this example, I'll just be doing this for RDP, which is a pretty common port that most people use, which is TCP port 3389. So log into your Viata with your IP address and also your username and password. Once that's done, we'll just be at the uh, terminal here. So just enter configure mode, which allow us, allows us to edit the config. Now, first of all, we'll do our NAT rule. So we'll be allowing RDP from the outside address through to the an inside address. Um, so first of all, just go set NAT destination rule and give it a rule number there as well. Let's give it a brief description. So this will be RDP port forward. You can also up arrow in this config as well, which is quite handy when you're doing configuration like this. So we'll do a destination address now. And this will be your outside address. So in this example, it'll be 119.252.88.90. So that'll be traffic um, coming from the uh, outside address. And this is what we'll translate from uh, going to an internal address. So I have to specify here a destination port as well. So that'll be port 3389. And you also have to specify an inbound interface as well. So in this example, it'll be coming, traffic will be coming from the outside. So this will be inbound interface 80. I'll have to specify the protocol here as well, which will be TCP. So next, we'll have to specify the translation address. So this will be the address that the uh, traffic from the outside to the inside will be translated to. So in my example here, it'll be 192.168.65.100. So that's a VM I've got on the inside of my firewall. I'll have to specify a translation port as well. So in this case, it'll just be 3389. So what's that saying is we're translating RDP coming from the outside on 3389 through to the inside on 3389 to the translation address of 192.168.65.100. So once that's done, just commit that to the config, so that'll be a commit command, and that'll make the NAT rule active. And also do a save as well, and that'll save the active config to the startup config, so when you reboot the firewall, the all your config changes will be present on the reboot. It's always a good idea to do frequent commit and saves, I think, just in case uh, you lose your config. So now that we've got the NAT rule in place, we'll do our firewall rule. So this will allow 3389 through to our address here of 192.168.65.100. So we'll do set firewall name. This will be coming from the outside to the inside. So again, we can just uh, see there when you do the tab, there's an outside to inside and outside to self um, pre-created firewall rules. So in this example, we're just using the outside to inside. So we'll specify a rule number there as well. In this case, it'll be action accept. So we'll be allowing traffic through. Just up arrow there again. So rule 30. In this case, we want a destination port number. That'll be 3389. And also a destination address as well. So that'll be our IP from before, which is 192.168.65.100. You don't have to specify a destination address. If you just left that blank, you could um, allow port 3389 through to all um, VMs on the inside subnet on the 192.168.65 subnet. But in this case, we'll do a specific IP address. We'll have to specify the protocol as well, which will again be TCP. So once that's done, we'll just commit that to the config again. We'll do another save. And we'll be able to show our rules here as well. So if we do a show NAT destination, we can see our destination NAT rule there. So you can see here there's an RDP port forward going from the outside address on 3389 on the interface E0, translating through to the inside address on port 3389 as well. And if you do a show firewall name, outside to inside. 
This will show us our rule that we've just created here as, as well. So this is our default rule, uh, allowing established and related connections. And this is the rule that we've just put in rule 30. So that's allowing port 3389 on destination address 192.168.65.100. And that's protocol TCP as well. So that's all you need to do to allow RDP through from the outside to the inside. And you can obviously test that out using your RDP client.